Ready? Okay. Um, I am setting this to record so we can go um, back through it later. When I see that there's numbers in a table, there's a couple things I want to do with them. The first thing I want to do is I want to graph those points. So let's start with graphing 2, 5. Three seven and four nine. Noticing a bit of a pattern here. What do you guys think would happen if I put the point five in? Yeah, the pattern seems to be that the X is one more, but the Y is two more, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go five, I don't think I can do it. Well, let's see. There's 10, so 11 would probably be here. What if I go down some numbers? What if I about do one? Mm -hmm. What if I put zero? So that's the, um, then we can find slope. That's an important one that we just found, because if we know that zero of is x and y is one, we found the y-intercept, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So that means that my y-intercept is positive mm -hmm. one. If I keep going, do you think we might find the x-intercept? Yeah. What if I say negative one here? Negative one again. It's gonna be negative one again. That looks to me like the x-intercept is crossing somewhere in the middle, right? Like I'm not getting a x comma zero with the y. It's going to be like one half. Can we find our slope from all this? Mm -hmm. What's my rise? Two. What's my run? One. So my slope is two. <clears throat> With that, which of these equations is pretty easy to fill in down below? Slope intercept form, I heard somebody say? Yeah, I can put 2x because that's my slope. And my y intercept is 1. So then if you put in a 0 for y, um, zero for the y, can you find the I could put a 0 in for the y and then find the x, couldn't I? Okay, I do I have some sticky notes I do. I'm gonna do this on a sticky note. So if I know that y is equal to two x plus one, and I wanna know what my x intercept is, couldn't I put a zero in here for the y? Because we know for the y intercept, this is gonna or the x intercept, the y is gonna be zero, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can do 2x plus 1. I have 0 on this side. It's a like term now with 1, isn't it? So I'm going to subtract 1. I heard somebody say it. Divide by 2. Negative 1 half is equal to x. Does it look like the x-intercept is at negative one-half there? Yeah. Yeah, and now we know it for sure because we plugged it into an equation. We're not just guessing based on our line on our graph. You could write it as a fraction or a decimal. With how big I'm writing in the space I had, I chose to do a decimal because I just thought it would fit better, but either way is fine. Okay, can I do point-slope form? Oops. 
sorry, we have this now, negative, oops, negative one half. Can I do point slope form if I know the slope and I've got all these points? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my slope is here, right? I could take any of these points here and plug them in. Two, five is taking the first point. Now what about standard form? Oh. Would it be uh, of negative one half x plus uh, two y equals uh, Maybe. You're using it. So Liam's making some good guesses up here based on what he knows from the numbers. But I want us to make sure. So I'm going to go back to this equation we're all really comfortable with. Y equals 2x plus 1. Standard form and point slope form are only usually one move away from each other. If it's in, in point slope form, all I have to do is move that 2x term to the other side, yes? So I'm going to subtract it. And I get negative 2x plus y equals 1. Yeah, as soon as I start subtracting that x term, little warning signs should be going off, right? Because the a in ax plus by equals c has to be positive. And because it's negative, I'm going to take this whole equation and divide every term by negative 1. Or I can multiply it by negative 1. That's just going to change the sign in everything to 2x minus y equals 1. Or negative 1. Thank you. Who said that? I was going positive. You caught me, Daniel. Thank you. Okay, so this is 2x. We're going to change this to a negative y. And this is a negative 1. Can I find a parallel line to this equation? What, what stays the same? So y equals 2x. I'm just going to change the y-intercept. What y-intercept do you guys want to use? 20. Okay. Liam wants positive 20. You can use whatever you want. What about a perpendicular line? Opposite reciprocal of the slope. So I've got a positive 2. That means that the slope has to be instead negative. of positive. Negative. And the, so the negative is the opposite. The reciprocal of that is? Negative 1 over 2. Cool. And what do you guys want as the y-intercept? 30. Why? It doesn't matter. You can make whatever you want. Yay. And that's it. I mean, the only thing I would say to complete this is that you should graph the line all the way by making it a line. <clears throat> this kind of line goes on and on and on. We could keep adding to our table. Who feels overall like this is just a good review of pretty much everything except word problems that was in chapter two. We have all three kinds of equations. We have parallel and perpendicular. Right? We have x and y intercepts. We've got a table. I think everything is almost on this page. So I gave you eight of these as practice problems. Yes, I recognize writing in these circles is kind of tiny. The idea is, maybe I'll change them to a line, but I thought lines would look like a negative sign. I just wanted you to know those are the blanks to fill in, right? Questions on anything else I gave you yesterday? Okay, then we have a good half hour of practice. Liam had a question. Liam, question? Thank you. Uh, yeah. Can we um, go to number two on a like, standard form? Yeah, can I look at yours? Because I don't two? have. Well, I don't have that copy up here. I kind of looked at it a little bit, but I, I don't know what to put in for it. Okay, so he's asking about number two on this. 
You guys want to grab your um, word pre problem practice? The word problem practice. I feel like you've done some good work here already. A landscaping company sells 13 bushes and four trees for $616. I have bushes, I have trees, and I have a total cost. Bushes are how much? $13. Trees are how much? Oh, I'm sorry. They're not up cost. It's the total number. There's 13 bushes and four trees, and the total came to $616. Our task is to find out how much a bush costs and how much a tree costs. So what if we say that bushes are X and trees are Y? How would I set up that equation? AX plus BY equals C. So I'm going to go with what I hear Rob is saying, which is 13 times plus 4 times Y equals 616. I'm going to read the word problem and point to the equation and look at the pieces from the words that are now in the equation. A, landsca a landscaping company sells 13 bushes, we said X stands for bushes, yes? Mm -hmm. So this is saying 13 bushes in math versus in English, plus, they used and, four trees. Four Y is four trees. Four, that means it equals how much? Okay, then the question is, if trees cost $63, how much do bushes cost? 13x plus 4 times 63 equals 616. I don't have a calculator, but I see some of you do. What's 4 times 63? 232. Marisol, what'd you get? Okay, so I've got 13 X, 13 bushes, plus all of the trees cut together cost 252. Is that the number you guys calculated? Yes. Equals 616. This is like a cash register receipt from a nursery, right? 13 trees, or bushes, four trees. The trees totally cost $252. If I take that away, it's going to tell me how much the bushes cost. Okay, 616 minus 252, I get 4... Oh, yeah. 364? Mm -hmm. Okay, so bushes altogether cost 364. Trees altogether cost 252. Those two together equaled my 616. But the question asks, how much do bushes cost? Divide 364 by 32. If I take the cost of all the bushes together and divide them by how many bushes? 13. What is my x equal? Calculators out there, I don't want to do this one. What'd you get? I can't hear you, you're a mumbling. 28. 28? So, 28 bushes. Isn't it $28? $28 per bushes. Oh, I keep thinking that this is the, yeah, you're right, $28. Thank you. I'm not looking at the problem either. $20 per bush. There's my correct English. Yeah, landscaping is expensive. Questions on anything else from yesterday's work? 